All right, let's now speak to the Honorable Evelyn Anite. She's uh, the Minister of State for Investments. Good evening, Honorable. Good evening, Joel. Why good is good it... All right, it's good to have you here. We're glad that you could come so you could clarify on uh, a couple of issues. Honorable, why is it always you? Uh, sole candidate, it was yourself. Now you are the front of this. Why? Well, Joel and viewers, it's clearly... It, for this, it's uh, Honorable Rafael Magezi, who is moving the amendment as a private member. And uh, I just support his views. I just happen to support his views. So it's not always me. All right. That's so it. you and him and others that are pushing for this, you seem to insinuate, Honorable, that uh, within the NRM, mm -hmm. all of you folks are incompetent, including yourself, that only one man has got the wherewithal, has got what it takes to be president of Uganda. Is that so? We've never said that. And who says that we're amending the constitution for President Museveni? Aren't you? No, we are not. If President Museveni becomes a beneficiary of this constitution, it will be by chance. You know, in the CA, they introduced this clause, Article 102B, so as to bar uh, President Milton Obote. And mm. it was famously then known as the Obote Clause. Mm. Now, those who are opposed to it are, are, are looking at this to remain there such that it is to bar President Museveni. And that's not our view. Article 102. Our opinion is it's discriminatory, not only to the elderly, but even to the younger generation. Just look at it this way, uh, uh, Joel. A young person at the age of 35 is not allowed to vie for the position of LC5, let alone the position of a sub-county chairperson. And then an older person above the age of 75 is not allowed to contest for the position of presidency. The irony here is, but anyone above the age of 75 is allowed to vote either side. Ibn, uh, how do you expect us to believe it when you say people. you're not doing this for President Yoru Museveni when in 2005 we had the same story about lifting of term limits. It was said, look, we're not doing this for the president. After all, he has said he's not going to run again. Here we are. It is how many years later? Twelve. So how do you expect us to believe you that uh, really you're doing this out of, you know, because it's good for our country and not for one man? Because we know for a fact in 2017, I mean 2021, he'll be 77 years of age, so he will not qualify. So how do you expect us to believe otherwise? But wha what makes you think that President Museveni is the only person in the party? You should the be answering that, Honorable. That's what I asked you, you because you, you did sole candidature, you're doing this no, 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 for no. him. I did sole candidature, and I have no apologies for that. And I, had, I gave justifications for support for doing sole candidature. But for this age limit, I also have justification, and I've made it very clear that whether you believe me or not, in NRM, we have people who are older than 75 years. And President Museveni is not going to be the only person above 75 years by the year 2021. Who are those? So because we know for a fact that in your party, you nobody you else ever tries to take that seat. Instance, Whenever they you know do, we know how it ends. So who are those ones? You've asked us how, how old is Honorable Chivejija. Honorable Has James he expressed Baba. interest to stand? I mean, we've not reached that stage of ex uh, uh, asking for people to express interest. We mm -hmm. have a process as a party to do that. But we've not reached that stage. But for us, we've looked at a constitution which is discriminatory. Mm. And you don't have to fault us for that. And you don't have to say that we're doing it for one person. We're not. So is President Museveni going to stand for LC5 chairperson? Is he going to stand for, for a sub-county chairperson position? So why, why don't you also question us that why do you want to open the lower limit? Because we don't want anyone to be differentized. We want mm. everyone... If you, if you have the right to vote, then you should have the right to, to stand and, and, uh, and uh, uh, to contest. Or it it should be um, the same right. Currently, you are 32 years old, going 33. And uh, literally, all you have seen is uh, President Museveni's presidency. Does it not bother you, Honorable, that um, we have not seen, and those older than you will tell you, this country has not seen a smooth transition. They have seen bloodshed every time we are transitioning from one president to another. Does it not bother you, Honorable, that you are one of those pushing for the removal of the last card that we have in our constitution to ensure a smooth transition of power in this country? Does that not make you lose sleep at all? What I can confid confidently tell you is that what I am happy and ready to enjoy is the peace and stability that I have seen for the last 32 years. You correctly stated that I am 32 years. I have enjoyed the peace and stability. But I have also read in history that the country before then was very unstable. 
So I don't yearn for transition that I do not know. What I yearn for... Why do you live in fear? What, what I yearn for? No, I, I'm just trying to tell you. I don't live in, in fear. I am because just, you seem to say, I work with President Museveni, there will be case. No, no, so no, let's no. stick I, to him. Why? Where do you get that from? Joel, I've told you clearly. It's not about President Museveni. This amendment is not about President Museveni. This has to first sink down in your, your, the minds of so many people. It's not about President Museveni. But what you're telling me that we need to have a, a smooth transition. We've been having smooth transition every election. Every after five years we go for election and then we transit to a new term of office. Isn't that transition? You say it's not for President Museveni. Look, uh, President Museveni has been nebulous. He's been cagey and unclear about this subject matter, like he was in 2005 about term limits. Uh, he has previously said, look, beyond 75, no, you don't have what it takes to make a good leader. And he said categorically that he will not stand again. Today, 15th of August, President Museveni marks 73 years of age. And by the way, happy birthday, Your Excellency. <laughs> Thank you and for that means wishing him that. And in 2021, he will be 77. He will not have what it takes to stand, at least according to our constitution, even going by his own words. And as of yesterday, he was saying something different altogether when my colleague asked him. He said, look, go and ask the doctors if beyond 75, you don't have what it takes. With all due respect to your excellency on your birthday, that's dishonesty. And you seem to participate in this dishonesty of, of our leader when you say one thing and you do another. That's a problem, Anita. Well, how am I going to explain to you that this am constitutional amendment is not about President Seveni? I've told you, if the President Museven is stated clearly that he is not going to contest, uh, maybe he, he needs to be subjected. He has not affirmed that. No, no, no. He's if saying he says, something different, which is he clear says, he wants to stand uh, again. No, no, no. If he says that he needs to be, uh, uh, doctors have to investigate if someone can actually serve beyond the age of 75. Why don't we try that? Let me tell you, it's not about ideology. What I hate most is discrimination. I am a victim of discrimination. I have been discriminated against by my age, by my sex, by my origin. I have been discriminated and therefore I will stand against anyone who wants to discriminate against any other person. Using and this discrimination card, Honorable Anita, because you see when you say it's discrimination, there's many things which people can say discriminate. So let's also remove the age of consent in the constitution because 15 year olds will say you're discriminating against us. We want to get married, our bodies are ready, you know, so let's do that. Retirement age, let's scrap that off the books because, you know, it discriminates against people. So Haven't you had people let, let, let's, let's remove every curtailment there is because if you're going to use that kind of discrimination, haven't you, then... Haven't, haven't you had people say that you should not discriminate that if you reach 60 years and therefore you have to retire? Haven't so you should we allow 13-year-olds to get married? Because, by the way, some 13-year-olds, no, no. physically, there but are some girls that have given birth at 12 years old. So should we allow them because but we don't want to discriminate the against them? You're talking about the body development. But we're talking about the mind. The, uh, this is politics now we're talking. We're not talking uh, in relation to the body development, how a young person's body, a woman's body has to mature. So as to conceive, because when you get married, you're going to make babies. So this is not about, in politics, when you join politics, it's not that you're going to conceive and therefore your body is going to be deformed and therefore it has to be this mature. No, if you ideologically oriented and you appreciate the issues that your people that you want to represent want you to go and do. Then you can go and stand, regardless of your age. Whether you're 18, then the people of Usuk, St. Proskovia, at the age of 18, and then she serve the people. Now, in Parliament of Uganda, there are members of Parliament who are older than the age 75. Aren't they giving service to their people? Well, there Myself, you are. Of course, you talk about Alan God. Some will say, Is look, I at that job? age, what did she do? But that's the story for another day. Let's begin to wrap this up, Honorable. Yesterday, you <laughs> clearly rocked the boat. As you talked about, we are the party in power and we have got the army. Now, of course, your excuse will be that, look, we're saying if you are threatening us, you know, we are going to find ways of being protected and the army can come in. But you see, when you say we are the party in charge, we have got the army, does, that, the not, numbers, that, 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 does that not go to speak to what people have been saying that, look, our army is partisan, the police is partisan. Now, Joel, the whole thing was got out of context. I want to tell you the reason as to why I spoke the way I spoke. I had gotten death threats. I had gotten uh, SMS. I, my colleague members of parliament went on the TV and said they're going to the gym to prepare to have a fist fight. One thing I know for sure, in the legislative parliament of Uganda. We go there to legislate, not mm. to fight. Now, when I am threatened, when someone sends me a message that because you have chosen the path of amending the constitution, you've chosen the path of bloodshed. 
What I know as a native is that the only person mandated by law to protect the citizens of this country is the police, the army. The Uganda The people, police actually keeps listen, you an order. Uganda the army comes in you know when it is? Uh, it's you know what You know the name, the, 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 the definition of our army? Uganda People's Defense Forces. Now, mm -hmm. if a fellow Ugandan is threatening to kill me, my only defense is Uganda People's Defense Forces. I am saying, don't threaten to kill me. Because these are my views. I actually made it very clear that this is not a fist fight. If you want to fight, go and join Gorola. But you my time is up, I'm afraid. Out, but, um, and look. then you, you put it out of context. That's not what I say. Let, let's wrap it up this way. Um, I have had you folks say that, look, we need to give President Yori Museveni more time, you know, so that he can continue to do and complete a couple of programs that he hasn't. Honorable Anite, what you have failed to complete in 30 plus years, it will be 35 in 2021. What guarantee do you have that you will complete it then? Joel, my brother, I've told you, get it out of your brain, that this amendment is not for President Museveni. Are you telling me then that if he stood in 2021, you would not support him? Yes or no? I would tell you, I'll only cross the bridge when I reach No, there. it's a simple question, no, 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 no. Banita. If President Museveni yes stands no. in 2021... I'm a politician. I can't give you a yes or no for an answer. I'm a politician. I have do you to think he deserves another debate. chance in 2021? Do you think he deserves to run again? If, assuming this, you know, is out of the way, there's no age limit, do you feel President Museveni deserves another chance to complete what he has not completed? With the steady focusedness of President Museveni, with the mm. services that I am convinced as a party member, mm. personally, when I'm going to cast my vote and I find his name on the ballot paper, mm. I will vote for him. And that's why I was asking you, what can he do that he has failed to do in 35 years? I have told you, I still believe that there's a lot that he has done. And I still believe that there's a lot more that hasn't been done that he can still do. So don't discriminate against anyone because of their age. All right. But that is not the debate that I want to engage in now. As, as, you, as you, you came in, Honorable Anita, my colleagues joked and said, uh, give us some money. Uh, <laughs> we hear that you people have been oiled well. Uh, it is a rumor that's going around. How much have you been given? That is if blackmail. There has been money given? That is blackmail. That's speculation. That's another way of intimidating us to back out of this debate. I've had it everywhere. I, for one, I don't run after money. Because my problem is not money. My problem is what is right for myself and for my people. And what I feel that is right for my people is that services must be delivered. You know, we if had this talk in 2005, and then MPs were... Literally bribed with how much? Five million shillings. I don't know about that. I was not there. So I don't know about any case of bribery. So you can't uh, allege that honorable members are going to be bribed. That is not right. That is, first of all, you need to apologize for that statement. Well, you're talking about 2005? No, no, no. Now that we're going oh, you're talking about bribed. now? Yes. Well, you know there's such a thing as precedent. It happened in 2005 and some people feel it is happening this time But did now. you say that you're a student of law now? Oh, yes, I did. So and that's why I'm using the word of precedent. Okay. And uh, now, people are saying since it happened the, the other law? time, it, they feel it has happened this time around. Did you also know that in mm. law that mm. you're studying? They say that he who alleges mm. must prove. That's why I said it's a rumor. I didn't say so it has happened. So prove. I asked one you of those people say is a recipient. Rumor is not good because me, mm. I know when I was sitting in the journalism class mm. that I'm supposed to respect, uh, 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 report my news fairly and balanced and truthful. That is what I learned. Well, 2005 began as a rumor, but it happened. But uh, if you say you've not been given money and this is your conscience, I think that's a good thing if it does play for you. But uh, if there is money involved, we shall find out. There is no money. Honorable <laughs> Evelyn Anita. As always, pleasure speaking to you. Pleasure Thank you for joining you, us. Joel. Do appreciate that. Pleasure. All right, moving on now.